Police officers have a huge responsibility of upholding the law. However, sometimes these cops cross their limits and end up doing the unthinkable. Today, we'll be going over three such cases where corrupt cops were exposed. On April 13, 2018, Chattanooga Police Department received a call from a concerned neighbor regarding an individual carrying a gun outside his home and threatening him. Moments later, Officer Cody Thomas was dispatched, and upon arrival, he confronted someone right outside his home. Can you pull low? Now, what's your name? What's going on? I don't know. They called me. I ain't calling you. I'm calling Who are we calling about? Calling about me, buddy. Calling about you? Not calling about me. I'm curious in your mouth. Hey, how about you watch your mouth for your ass gets thrown in the back of my car? The caller had informed the police that the person issuing threats was named Polo and was wearing green and black pants. It could be clearly seen that this person was not dressed as that, but Officer Cody had some other plans. You go here talking about talking about who am I, Polo? And I told you no. Hey, listen. Oh, yeah, listen, you been going. No, get your right. over here. You're not yeah, part right. of this. Come here. Right. Come here, right now. Come here. You can't go for what? I'll shoot your fucking dog. Shoot my dog, boy. You can't come in my yard. Get over here now. The situation escalated in mere seconds as the officer took no time in brandishing his taser. What happened next was extremely disturbing, to say the least. Get over here, right! Taser deployed. Start me at 20. The individual in question was not Polo, but a person named Nate Carter. Officer Cody did no investigation before deploying the stun gun, and he was still not done. Get your ass out of here! Show me your fucking hands! Get your ass out of here! Show me your fucking hands! Get your ass out of here now! Get your ass over here now! Or I'm gonna shoot your fucking dog! Get your ass out of here now! seemed as if the officer had lost it, as he even threatened to shoot his dog if he didn't come outside. Moments later, more officers arrived on the scene, urging Carter to disclose himself. Hey, sweetie, come here. Come here. It's okay. Y'all come here. Hey, y'all come here. Everything's okay. You stay right there. Hey, you come over there. You go over there. Carter finally decided to come out of the house, however. He had no idea what was about to happen to him in the next few minutes. I'm taking my mail off! Man, what the fuck are you on the ground for? What is it, Mr. Chair? Man, what the fuck are you? For who? You got to take my mail! For who? Man, for who? Are you serious? Get close, I got him. I got him. For who? Get close, I got him. For who? Several officers joined in, yet no one showed any compassion towards the poor Carter. Eventually, he was taken towards the police cruiser as he kept pleading his innocence. Who cares? Get in the car! Who cares? Get in the car! Man, for real! 
As the situation eased a bit, the officers finally approached the person who had initially called the cops, and he was about to reveal the mistake they had made. All right, uh, I'm the one to call. you called, yeah, correct? Yeah. Was this about him, correct? No, 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 it was, the, uh, it was another guy, but he ran through the, he had the Glock. He was standing by that telephone pole, and he was talking about shooting up me and her within that playing car, and he was talking about, you know, and uh, he was talking about shooting up in her in her. In because when house. I walked up, you said, yes, that's him. No, no, I did not. Yes, you did, because I walked up and I said, who are you here about? And he said, yeah, that's why I'm here. And so when I started confronting him about going in the house, that's oh, when all this erupted. I, I asked you, I said. I misunderstood what you said. Officer Cody realized the grave mistake he had made, but even now he had no intentions of accepting his mistake. In some minutes, he went over to explain the entire situation to his sergeant. He called you, not me. Now go deal with him. And I was like... I said something to him. Um, I asked him, like, what is your name? He made some comment. I said, what? And he said, how about you open up your ears and shut your mouth? And I was like, how about I said, excuse me? And then so I asked him for his ID, and he was like, man, what you talking about? Leave me alone. Well, in my mind, that's the guy who has the gun. And he had his, he had his body turned like this the whole time, but wouldn't move at all. He wouldn't move. Officer Cody shamelessly changed the entire story as he held no regard for his badge. Luckily, the body cam footage was there to reveal what had actually happened. I gave him right and he's like, no, I'm going back in my mouth, or going back in my house. And I said, come here right now. And he said, for what? I said, give me your ID. I said, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. But the whole time he's going like this, and then he kind of stepped towards me and started walking back in the house. So I'm thinking he's going to go get, either do something with the gun. So I tased him right in the back. And then that's when he, he, he rode it for a solid three seconds, and then tripped up the stairs, and that's when he slammed the door, and that's when the barbs, uh, uh, barb, I guess the, sec the second barb came out. Several officers joined in as the sergeant was planning to clear themselves from this case. The biggest surprise was that no one showed any empathy towards Carter. It's fine, but make sure you, exactly like you described it to me, it needs to be written down. Yeah, you played himself in the doorway to keep one hand hidden. Yep. Was the disorder with the weapon and a gun? Yeah, the guy said he has a Glock, and I pull up, and he was an asshole to me, and the first thing I said is, this is why I'm here. There. No. I said, the first thing he said to me, I said, is this him? And he was like, yeah, that's why we're here, or that's why you're here. And that's when he was like, you open, close your, open your ears and shut your mouth and go over there. Instead of letting him go after discovering he wasn't the guy they were looking for, the corrupt officers were determined to fabricate any charge they could find in the book. And if Van Ness couldn't help me with make up anything else. But that's what I have right now is disorderly resisting. I need to figure out is, do you do you have any of this information? Could you pull Carbon, that up? I have it. Carbon will? Because he did a report. Officer Cody took Carter to the police station where he was charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest and was later booked into the county jail. I think I have a sticker one in the trunk if you want it. I can write my badge number on it. You said you wanted a badge. I told you I'd get you on. I was breaking federal law. Soon after this incident, Carter was released from jail and the charges against him were dropped. He filed a complaint and following an internal affairs investigation, Officer Cody Thomas was suspended for two weeks and after that, he was placed back on the job. However, Carter didn't stop there as he filed a lawsuit against Officer Cody and the police department as he is seeking $1 million in compensatory damages and $2 million in punitive damages. But this wasn't the last time an officer's corrupt actions were caught on camera. At this time, it was a corrupt corrections officer under the fire. You're under arrest. Why? Because you were in possession of that oh, no, In November 2019, in a Santa Fe detention center, an officer discovered a pouch of narcotics dropped in the parking lot. Upon viewing the CCTV footage, the officers discovered something outrageous. In that car, the officer also carpooled with our lieutenant, uh, Cohen Mangin. The same one that was also part of the same one, yeah. search? Okay. So, um, as the officer's walking back after he splits, he's walking right here and he sees a package on the ground, picks it up, and where's it at? Uh, ends up turning out to be methamphetamines. We go back, test it, test positive. They go back, start reviewing the tape, 
and the tape, you'll see here, but the lieutenant gets out of the car when he's walking right here. He pulls out his pocket and drops on the ground. According to the footage, Lieutenant Cohen Mangin, who was a corrections officer, was the one who dropped the bag of methamphetamine. Now you can watch right about right here, you're gonna see. Right here. Boom. Just see it. Okay. What's his name? Cohen Mangin. C O H E N. And then Mangin was M A N G I N. The next morning, a few officers were called over to investigate Mr. Mangin at the same correction center. Um, had found a package in the parking lot. A package? Yeah, just a small little baggie. Um, so, as you know, protocol is whenever they find potential yeah, narcotics. Call, so the yeah. Always... yeah, and they'll review surveillance video and all that um, to see where it came from to see if it was from, you know. Uh, and uh, clearly in the video, um, you're seeing and in that same video, um, there's a package that when you reach into your pocket, you pull out and you drop something on the ground. I did? You did. A what? Initially, Manjin denied any knowledge about the package, and that's when the officers tried to talk to him, so he confessed to the crime he had committed. I mean, everybody has their, their outs. I mean, is it something you want to talk about? Like, I, I know you said you're working, this is what, your 12th day in a row? Yeah, it's not a I have no idea what that is, and I dropped it on the ground. I have money and stuff in here that is similar to that. I I drop it on the ground. Can I see the footage? Am I allowed to? You know what, Cohen? Yeah. And we have good relationships with the DA's office. We have good relationships with you know the ju judicial process. Your best bet right now is to be completely honest. Okay. Honesty, believe it or not. It's instilled to us from our kids. It does go along with us. Mac Manjin refused to talk and asked that he needs his lawyer. That was when the officers decided it was time to arrest him. However, that's when Manjin's emotions started to let loose. Look. Turn around for me. Oh no, come on, man. Why? We why have to. Guys? No, why? Why do you have to do this, Salgado? Come on, man. I'll well, tell you, I'll tell you what everyone told me. No, we're, we're no, past man, I'm that. Trying to, no, I'm trying to talk. Let me talk about this, man. We're past that point. No, please, I will talk to you, man. Just you don't do this, man. I'll talk Look, to you. I was not scared. You're under arrest. Why? Because you were in possession of that come on, man. No, come on, man. I didn't bring you out. I didn't bring you into this. Mangan was not only a police officer, but also featured in the reality show Behind Bars Rookie Year. Whatever the reason, felt too entitled to be arrested for his wrongdoing as he kept pleading to the officers. Look, you were in possession chance. of it. LT, give me a chance, man. You know what? I'll talk to you. I promise, man. You've already told us you don't want to talk anymore. No, I meant okay. because I need to calm down. I'm not now we're telling you you're under arrest, and now you're wanting to change your story. No, like, I'll talk to you and tell you anything you want to know. Legally, you know, it, it, you, you're telling you're... us you don't want to talk, and now you're I didn't talking. say I didn't want to talk. I said I, I said I don't want anything else to say right now. Okay. Just, if you have good. something else to say, that's fine, but understand, you're being arrested regardless. Are you serious? Yes. <sighs> what word, man? So, we can talk. But, you're, but I'm not going to lie to you and say you're not being arrested. You're going to jail tonight. The entitlement was skyrocketing at this point, as Manchin thought it was completely okay to be smoking meth inside a correction facility. Luckily, the officers did not fall for his erratic behavior. Possession of Are you serious substance? right now, man? Mm -hmm. How? How? I, I didn't... Like Please. I told you, it's clear. Oh, man. Clear as day on video. Can I talk to you a bit before I go in there, man? Yeah, sit down. Yeah, we'll talk to us. Realizing that he had no other option, Mangan opted to sit and talk once again. And this time, the officers got straight to the tough questions. Were you bringing this into the facility? I swear to God, sir, it was not on my children. For the inmates? No, sir. No, sir. If you were to submit to a drug test right now, would you have methamphetamine in your system? Yes, sir. You would? Yes, sir. When did you last use? Um, two days ago. Two days ago. To disregard it in the in the parking lot like that. I didn't even know I dropped it, man. You didn't? No, I did not, sir. You didn't see like the STI no, no. uh, explorer out there? I don't, freak I, don't, out. I don't know because they've been staying out there. I don't know. 
I didn't freak out. I, I honestly. Finally, he accepted his mistake, agreeing that he had been using the narcotic for quite some time. However, the officer still had a lot to ask. I would never bring shit into a facility, man. Never. That's against everything that I put down on my children's life. I'll take a polygraph, anything you want, man. I would never do that. I've been in this game too long, man. My dad was FBI, he was a captain across the street. Went to Rio Rancho PD. My uncle, my brother, everybody's in law enforcement, man. I have a hard time. I'm a single father with three kids, two baby mamas. I, I don't have problems financially, nothing like that at all. I don't. I have a beautiful home, everything. I just, I, I work a lot of overtime, man. We only have three lieutenants. Now they only have two. You know what I mean? And I... Mangan claimed that he used the narcotic to stay up during long shifts. After a few more questions, emotions started to roll out. We have to enforce and policies we have to follow. It's not enough. It's not enough. Trust me, we're not getting any pleasure out of this. Whatsoever. Oh, man. This is, if anything, uncomfortable for us. I wouldn't do that. Why would I drop something right there, man? It's... Or, unfortunately, it's still a felony crime just to be in possession of it. Yeah, but... Mangan kept crying for a few minutes before he stopped and one of the officers started to explain the charges against him and the gravity of the situation he found himself in. Uh, felonies are handled through the district attorney's office. Um, I know, man. I know. I know. It's, it's yeah, any, any measurable amount. Anything like that, it's, it's all the same. Um, you know, if it were marijuana or something, it's a misdemeanor. But the, the harder drugs are, are felonies. Finally, the officers decided to put an end to the proceedings as they continued with the arrest. This time, even Manjin didn't resist. Pretty good dude. Put two cups on, okay, man? Mangan was then booked into the jail, but that wasn't the end of the day for the investigation officer, as he also went over to listen to the officer who had found the little bag in the parking lot. Plastic baggie that had a crystal, like a white crystal like substance in it. Where was this at? It was in the parking lot. Um, where at in the parking lot? It was, uh... If you, like, where was it near, I guess you'd say? Because it's kind of a big parking lot. It was lot. near the facility, the entrance to the facility is near there, and it was near, uh, it was... Like, uh, like booking or like the front, like the, the admin? The admin area. So were you, were you guys going through the employees? Go through? Yeah, we were going through the employees. Okay. In the end, Lieutenant Cohen Manchin was arrested and jailed in the same correction center for bringing contraband into a jail and possession of a controlled substance. However, just one week after the arrest, Cohen was released from prison. And later, in January 2020, both charges against him were dismissed without prejudice. Do you think his father being in the FBI had something to do with this? I would rather not. In August 2022, John Doe went into the Harris County Sheriff's Office to retrieve some public records that included some body cam footage of the traffic stop he was involved in. The deputy gave him a waiting time of 10 working days, but John received nothing. After three weeks, he returned to the Sheriff's Office hoping to find a solution. Yes, sir. No. Either the records or a written response as to, to, to my request uh, as to why I cannot get the records. Texas statute says that you have 10 working days to either give me the records or give me a written response why you cannot give me the records. The deputy asked John to wait as he contacted someone from the department. After 10 minutes of waiting, the head of the legal department and another legal expert appeared on the scene. We were waiting for uh, public records. Who? Public records. Yes, the legal director. Can we talk before you? 
Are you the custodian of the records? I am the legal director of the legal department. Okay. I, I can, yes, but I will not. Uh, how can I help you? Well, we're, we're, we're asking how can we help you? Oh, I'm trying to retrieve some public records that I requested uh, three weeks ago, but I've received uh, no response on it within the 10 days that the law gives you. Either the records or a written response to as to why you cannot give me the records. As John laid down his request, the head of legal seemed to have an answer for him. However, it appeared that she also seemed to be quite afraid of being filmed. So it's not 10 days, can you start? It's 10 working days. That's why we need three weeks to come here, 15 working days. Can I see your yes, ma'am. Can you, can you I would rather not. I'm, I, I'm documenting my interactions with the government. These two different requests. If you're ahead of the legal department, you understand I have every right to record. Am I correct? He, he can record. He can record public officials. That's correct. Luckily, one of them straight away corrected the other person, ensuring the right to film in public. However, the bigger problem remained as to how will they manage the request. No, ma'am, I, I prefer to do it in person. When did you, you came in person? And you I came in person. On, at the bottom, you can see. Please don't turn the page. The, the first page is all you need to see. No, 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 not turn. Turn. Sorry, I have an accent. I said turn. Don't turn the page. Don't turn the page, please. Both of the legal experts were trying their best to dodge the situation and avoid taking the blame. That's when John explained everything once again. So here's how it works. Ma'am, I'll, I'll tell you what I did there. So, so, I came here. I came here and I've done this. Here, I submitted my public record request in person as the Public Information Act says that I can. This is the name of the deputy that received it. It says the date and time. That's AM. 909 and the other 908, or vice versa. So, okay. I did my part. He didn't give me a request number or anything. They insisted that John file his request online. However, he made it clear that he preferred handling matters like these in person. So let me, I need to do some research to figure out where your request is at in my department. Sorry, may I? I would like to go by the law. The law says that whatever you're telling me now, if you can put it in writing. The response should be in writing. Yes. I appreciate it. Okay. So here's how we do public information requests that are received. Can, can you do this in writing instead of telling me, please? Please. Thank you. John was being ignored of his legal rights, and he made sure to let the lawyers know about it. He was also adamant about either getting the records or getting a written response. The legal team claimed that this complaint never reached them. If that's the case, then there must be some scrutiny for the person responsible for taking in complaint. I'm telling you that I need to take this upstairs to figure out... Can you make a copy, maybe? He has a copy machine. Okay. And in it's going to take a little while for me to figure it out and write a response of where it's at. Okay, I'll wait. Or you can email it to the email. Okay, so you do have access to it? I, I use a, a friend's computer to access email, yes. Some of this is releasable, some of it may not be under the law. Okay. I'm not going to wait here for the records. I'm going to wait here for your written response, which okay. is probably, I need time to do it because I wasn't aware of the request. Whatever you want to take, just in writing. Both of them went upstairs to investigate the complaint while John waited patiently. Moments later, one of them appeared with a printed document he claimed was also emailed to John. However, upon closer inspection, it was found that a huge error had been made by the department. And this is a response that was sent back to that email that you've got listed okay. at the bottom of the page. It was sent back on 8-3-2022 at 1054. And it was a clarification. They needed you to make some clarifications. It was never sent to me. Well, I'm just showing you that this is what they provided and it was shown it was email. Okay, to that's the wrong email. After John Doe here, there is a TX. 
John Doe TX no, at right. Gmail. John yeah. Doe without the TX at Gmail. So you sent it to the wrong address. Yes, the level of incompetency was shocking. They had sent an email to the wrong address requesting further clarifications regarding the request. Despite John making everything quite clear in the complaint form, this seemed like a clear attempt to dodge the public records request. John was not happy with the reply, and despite his complaints with the legal team, he had no solution but to head back home. At this point, we don't know if he made any more attempts to get these records. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today, we got to see how police officers react after they are exposed and are caught breaking the law. The first case was a classic example of racial profiling and an officer overstepping his boundaries to feed his ego. The other cases were also events of officer neglect, particularly the one where an officer was caught and punished for carrying narcotics within the jail premises. We can only hope that the cops are given much more training on the law and are equipped with de-escalation tactics. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and also make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.